Come on, I can't hear you. Good morning, Liberty Church Manzini. This is the day that the Lord has made for us to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. So I'll invite us to stand to our feet as we worship Him as our Lord and Savior today. Amen. us this morning to step in a little bit deeper and to enter in a little bit more. Are, are you guys good with that this morning? Amen. Are you guys good with that this morning? Amen. I believe that God always has more for us. He says that in his word, there is always more. In fact, Ephesians 3 says he has infinitely more than we could ask or imagine. So I'm not sure what your day is like this morning. 
I'm not sure what it is that you are asking him for or thanking him for. I'm not sure where you're at, but wherever you are at, he has more. And all that we need to do is just step in a little bit more. So we're gonna declare that again, that this faith that he has given us, this hope that is unshakable, regardless of what we feel or what's going on, we are going to not just start this race, we're not going to just do it for a week, but we're going to do it until the end. In Jesus' name. Amen, church. Amen. Let's declare Amen. that. All right, church, can I just invite you today to shine that? Amen. Amen. How many of you know that your God is alive this morning? Amen. We know that you are there with us, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father God, um, even for all sickness and disease and all pain and all burdens that we are carrying, Lord Jesus. We want to say thank you in, in advance, Lord God, for, for taking it away and for healing, Lord Jesus. We want to say thank you in advance, Lord Jesus, for moving in miraculous ways, Smaradze, and for all of the things that you have done for us. We say thank you for being a good father in our lives. We honor you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
that when we are confused, Lord Jesus Christ, you give us rest, you give us peace, Lord Jesus Christ. You sit in the highest place in our lives, my God. Be exalted even this time, my God. We worship you, Jesus. You sit in the highest place, precious King of grace, your exalt. Oh, 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 oh,
Bible in 2 Kings, we read a few chapters where the nation of Israel is going through something quite difficult and um, they have been attacked by another nation. There's a famine in the land and it's just really tough. And if you read through those stories, um, there's a lot going on. Everybody's suffering and affected. Maybe you can relate. But in 2 Kings chapter 7, from verse 1, there's a prophet in there called Elisha. He's talking to the king and he says, it says, Elisha replied, listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord says. By this time tomorrow, in the markets of Samaria, six quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver, and 12 quarts of barley grain will cost only one piece of silver. The officer assisting the king said to the man of God, that couldn't happen even if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. That really struck me, and I want us to think about that as we begin to pray this morning. Like I said, a lot of things were happening. I would encourage you to read through 2 Kings from chapter 1 to chapter 7. It was pretty dire, possibly more dire than some of us might be facing, or comparably dire. And so, like I said, we most probably can relate to what was happening. And so with that, that scene, where the prophet comes and God has said a message and he says, this time tomorrow, this time tomorrow, everything is going to change drastically and everything will be restored. That's the message the prophet gives. But then this guy who was listening in, he did what we sometimes do, right? He was like, even if God opened the floodgates, it couldn't happen. And Maybe again, you can relate to that. I know I can. There are times when God says, this time tomorrow. Some of us are familiar with the story of Sarah. God said, this time next year. And she laughed because she was like, that can't happen to me. And maybe right now your situation is so dire that if I stood here in front of you as you're joining us online, as you're here in this building, in any of the rooms listening, and I told you this time tomorrow, you will have that job that you so desperately need. This time tomorrow, your body will be completely healed from that disease you've been fighting for for years. This time tomorrow, that person that you're praying for to get saved will be saved. God is able to turn things around. He's able to, he's able to. And we must be careful to not let our doubt, maybe even our realism, right? There's no way that can happen. Get in the way of what God is speaking to us. So we're gonna take some time to pray and I just wanted to encourage us as I encourage myself. Let's believe that our God is a God who can change things by this time tomorrow. And what's amazing about that story is that while they were talking and all of that was, was happening, God just confused the enemy camp all on his own. No one even did anything. They were just living their lives and God disturbed everything and that's how things change this time tomorrow. And so as we just pray and live our lives, God is working out whatever needs to be worked out. I have a couple of requests that have been written down here that I'll share. And I would encourage you after the service, if you have some, there's a table, these little yellow cards, please share yours so that the team can keep praying with us through the week. Um, my, one of them is for me actually, and I'm just praying for physical healing, not feeling too well today. And I'm believing God that by this time tomorrow, I'll be feeling much better. I know there's many among us who are sick. And so if you're with me, um, just let's join in prayer for healing for our bodies. I also have a prayer here from Megan Dombi, who serves on our host team, and she's looking for land to purchase. And let's believe with her that God will work out all of the details and provide the perfect land for her and her family to purchase. And I have one here from Mark. Um, him and his family just lost their aunt, and so they're grieving. And let's pray for God's comfort and God's peace upon them. We're going to take some time to all pray as a church. We believe that God hears all of our prayers. It tells us in his word that if we ask, if we seek, if we knock, he will hear, he will answer, and he will do what we have asked because he's our father who loves us and he's our father who listens to us. So 
don't disqualify yourself during this prayer time let's all step in let's come in for more and believe that by this time tomorrow by this time next week by the time you get out of this building god would have done something in that situation let's join together in prayer father we thank you for each of these things that have been listed and all of the things represented in this room God, we join together as a family, as your children, and we make our requests known to you. God, we pray for every situation in this place right now that feels impossible to us, Lord. Maybe it's a situation in our marriages. Maybe it's a situation concerning our children. God, maybe it's physical healing that many of us are praying for. Maybe it's finances, God, we are desperately needing a breakthrough, Lord. Whatever it is, Lord God, Father, we thank you that there is nothing that is too big for you, Father. That there is nothing that you don't see God you love us incredibly Lord God your word says that while we were still sinners you chose to come and die for us and bring us back to full restoration with our Heavenly Father God and it says you did that because you wanted to because that's how much you love us God I pray in this place today that we would assimilate receive and just fully live in the revelation of that love that you have for each one of us and that we would believe Lord God that before Lord God we think it's possible Lord God sooner maybe than we anticipated that you are able to turn things around God even though it has been years God even though Lord it has been a lifetime Lord you are able to do miracles Lord God for each one of us and so we lift up ourselves we lift up our families we lift up the nations of the world and the needs to you God who is able to change all things it's in Jesus name we pray and everybody said and everybody said amen you know we say amen um, not just because we've heard other people say amen but we say amen to mean I agree and he tells us in his word that if two or three of us agree he's there he's listening and he will act god loves and blesses our agreement and so thank you for joining in prayer thank you for joining us um, in any different way that you're joining us this morning my name is zinti i'm the community pastor here along with my husband lou who will be preaching later welcome to liberty church manzini if you're joining us for the first time you are very very special guest we're really happy that you chose to be with us in whatever medium you're joining us if you're here in person please make sure you go to our next steps area. If you're joining us online, please make sure you respond to the link that's provided in there and let us know you're with us for the first time so we can celebrate you and welcome you and help you be a part of our family if you are looking for a church home. Right now we're going to do something that's very fun for us here at Liberty Church, which is just walk around and greet one another with a little bit of an elbow, a little bit of a smile behind that mask. Let's spread the love of God and walk around for a few minutes and then we'll come back.
first time we're so happy that you're here with us and it's just good to see everybody in here um, as we worship together this morning I'm very very excited to introduce our speaker today we are concluding our series has anybody enjoyed our win the day series has anybody been winning some days with the power of prayer and the power of worship and the power of community and all these great habits, spiritual habits that are building us up? Today, Lou's going to conclude that series as he shares a message. So please, can you help me put your hands together as we welcome Lou. Good morning, everybody. I was about to start singing my rap lines from long back, you know, when I was doing rap music. But maybe I'll do them if the service ends early. Amen. Thank you, Zinti. And thank you to everyone who is here this morning. It is such a joy and a delight to be in God's house. I consider it a privilege. Amen. So I want to acknowledge that you made it a priority and you are here as we worship God together. Give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> this morning as Zinti was praying, I just failed to emphasize to us that we welcome prayer requests. We have a prayer team that is gathering together during the week and praying in different locations and would love to participate with you in what God is doing in your life. So when you fill in a prayer request, our prayer team takes that and gives opportunity for people during the week to be praying over what you are believing God for and maybe even thanking God for. We don't only go to God to get we also go to God to give. Amen. So even if maybe you're saying, you know what, I'm good right now, but I want to give thanks to God. Just fill in a praise report or a prayer request at the prayer table, which is outside, and we would love to pray together. I believe that the Lord has called his house in these last days to be a house of prayer. Amen. Praise God. So like Zinti has said, we have been going through a series where we are looking at spiritual disciplines. Now disciplines are only as effective as how much and how effectively we practice them. So we have been trying to talk about not just what the discipline is, but also how we can put it into practice. So we took a deeper look at six spiritual disciplines. And the teacher in me is tempted to give someone a prize for mentioning all of them. But for the sake of time, I'll keep going today. <laughs> I'll keep going. Maybe next time. Um, and today I get the privilege of sharing the seventh discipline that when put into practice helps us win the day. How many want to win the day? Let me just see you wave your hand if you're saying, I want to get to the end of the day and feel like today was a good day. Is that you? And I, 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 can, I, I can relate with that feeling that there are some times when I get to bed and I'm about to sleep and I'm like, I don't feel good about today. These practices help us have less and less of those kinds of days and more and more of the kind of days where when you get to bed, you are like, I wish I could do it again. So the seventh discipline that I'm going to share today, and I'm actually concluding the series, but also beginning another series, is generosity. Amen. The power of daily generosity. That is the title of the message today. 
as we explore how we can win the day how we can get to the end of today and be like thank God for today the power of daily generosity I'm going to pray and then we will read together and as we do I just want you to to be on the lookout for something that God is saying to you personally because much better than I can preach and I'm going to do my best to preach today but much better than I can preach the word of God will speak to us so I'm going to pray and then we'll read together, we'll read out loud we'll follow on the screen thank God for the privilege of being able to read together from the screen but just be on the lookout for what the spirit is saying to you are you ready? Father, we thank you for the gift and the grace of giving. We pray that you help us to excel in it. Lord, today I ask that you speak to us. Help us to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches so that we may win the day through the power of daily generosity. I pray, Lord God, that where we are weak, you would help us be strong. I pray, O oh Lord Jesus, that where we are in the dark, you would bring us into the light. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would take us from one level of glory in the area of generosity to a higher level. I pray that Liberty Church Manzini will be a generous church in every way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's look at the screen and let's read together. We are reading from the book of 2 Corinthians 9, verse 10 to 15. Are you ready? Let's go for it. This generous God who supplies abundant seed for the farmer, which becomes bread for our meals, is even more extravagant towards you. First, he supplies every need, plus more. Then, he multiplies the seed as you sow it, so that the harvest of your generosity will grow. You will be abundantly enriched in every way as you give generously on every occasion. For when we take your gifts to those in need, it causes many to give thanks to God. Verse 12. The priestly ministry you are providing through your offering not only supplies what is lacking for God's people, it inspires an outpouring of praises and thanksgiving to God himself. For as your sorry, for as your extremely generous offering meets the approval of those in Jerusalem, it will cause them to give glory to God. All because of your loyal support and alliance to the gospel of Christ, as well as your generous hearted partnership with them toward those in need. Because of this extraordinary grace which God has lavished on you, they will affectionately remember you in their prayers. Praise God for his astonishing gift which is far too great for words. Please keep that verse 15 there. For me, this, this is mine today that generosity is a gift. What is yours? What did you hear the Spirit teach you about generosity? What did he say to you? As you put that into practice, I believe as a church, we will experience the fruit of what we see here. We see here a church being generous. And when Paul is talking to them, he concludes by saying, praise God 
Praise God for the gift of being able to be generous. And I want to begin today by saying, praise God that you and I get to have the privilege to be generous. You know, as I was thinking about this message, I'm going into the message today. I, um, I observe that oftentimes when we speak about generosity in the church, it can be a little uneasy. And I'm being honest about it as I begin because I want to highlight that generosity is something that God wants for us. It is not something that God wants from us. Amen, Basalan. God is not broke. Right? God didn't fail to make a good budget and now he needs to find a way of making ends meet. The gift of being able to be generous as believers is for us. We will be blessed. I mean it. We will be so blessed by putting this into practice and we will get to the end of our day and sleep at night with more peace. Even though sometimes we have less resources. It is for us. Everything God commands us to do is for our blessing. We just need to see it from his perspective. If somebody is with me today, please say amen. amen. Like Zinti said, let's agree that we are going to see generosity the way that God sees it. Because I was preparing this week and I was stuck. It happens once in a while. I, I had no idea what I was going to preach. And on Thursday morning, I woke up and we were reading with Zinti. And we're reading somewhere in Kings. I don't really even remember what we're reading. And the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to see just how generous God has been to us. And immediately I knew what I was meant to share with us today. Immediately I was confident. I spent the least amount of time preparing this message because it's not from me. The Lord showed me it is for us. It is for it is absolutely for us. And we will be blessed. Amen. We will be blessed. Amen. As we walk in this gift. The key, the key, and I realize this, the key is for us to approach it from God's perspective. Amen. Amen. I realized that um, everyone today can grow in being generous because everyone has something to give. I also realize that everyone here today will benefit from being generous. No one is beyond the grace and the blessing that comes from being generous. However, I also realized and I did feel to highlight this because I feel like this is the part that sometimes we miss when we're talking about generosity. I also realized that though generosity is simple, it is not always an easy thing to do. It is simple. The things I'm going to talk about today, they are not rocket science. It is not always an easy thing to do. That is why today I would like to share with us mindsets that help us grow in it. The word of God is not complicated, but we do need to grow in it. We need to let our roots go deep. And so today, I'm not sure where you are when it comes to generosity. Maybe you are like, I'm not sure I even want to give a single cent to the church. Maybe that's where you are. Or maybe you are at this place where I'm like, you know, I give when the times are good. But when it's challenging, God understands, so I won't give. I don't know where you may be, but my hope today is that I may share with us some mindsets that when we view giving from those mindsets, we will have the kind of generosity that allows us to be generous when things are easy, but to also be generous when things are challenging. That allows us to be generous in spite of being in need. And we saw this in the, 
in the New Testament more than once how people gave in spite of being in need. So, it is not insensitive for me to talk to someone who is in need and tell them to give. It is not. And that's why I want to I wanna confidently talk to everyone. I was like, oh, praise God for the kind of message that can apply to everyone. Because we can all benefit from putting this to practice. Currently, we are living in difficult times. And as a church, we have seen the financial giving decrease. Not only Liberty Church Manzini, all over the world, the financial giving has decreased. And this is showing us that our generation struggles to give when things get difficult. And so I want to speak to our generation. I want to speak to people who are living through a pandemic. I want to speak to people whose source of income has been affected. And help us go to that place where we become like the widow who gave two mites. When Jesus was observing and rich people were giving, he was silent. Then the moment someone came and gave two mites, two copper coins, some translations say, Jesus stood up and this is what he said. Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. He's talking to someone who put in two mites, two copper coins. I think maybe in this what we say, I'm a saint. One who put in two copper coins and everyone could hear, right? To Kenche, Jesus says, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them for they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, this is not me, this is Jesus. Jesus says, she, out of her poverty, put in all she had to live on. You know, someone was once given a vision of this widow in heaven. And God opened this person's eyes to see the reward that this woman had when she got to heaven. And one of the things that he said, of course, you know, it's even more glorious than we can express. He said, the house that she has, the mansion that she has in heaven is glorious. This woman. And so I'm, I want to talk to you. Are you saying Lungle has been tough. I am in poverty. I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking. Are you saying the pandemic has turned my finances upside down? I'm speaking to you. I am praying and believing that Liberty Church Manzini will be the kind of church that has an all weather, all season kind of generosity. The key to building this generosity is to develop three mindsets, to live according to these three mindsets. The first mindset is the mindset that says, everything I have belongs to God. To have the kind of generosity that this widow has, who gave all that she had to live on. And when Jesus says something, it's true, church. Jesus was not exaggerating what this widow did. This widow gave everything that she had to live on. To be the kind of believer who live according to how this widow did, the first mindset we must develop is everything I have belongs to God. This mindset builds our capacity to be generous because it reminds us, we know this, but it reminds us that we are stewards, not masters. We are servants, not lords. Right? When a lord is giving, it's an inconvenience. But when a servant is giving, that's all they do. That's all they do. It's a part of their job description. To test yourself to see whether or not you have this mindset or maybe how much you need to develop it, 
Try answering this question. This question challenged me when I asked myself. Try answering the question, when I give, do I feel like I have lost or do I realize I have been faithful? When I give, when I give my money to the church, do I feel like ah, that was a loss, but I guess I'm a part of the church, so I must do something? Or do I feel like, thank you, God, I've been able to be faithful this month? See, if we're overwhelmed by the feeling of loss, it may be a sign that we don't yet realize that what we have is not ours. We received it as a trust. We received it as a test and one day we're going to give an account because remember, we are servants, not masters. Amen. We are stewards, not lords. The money we have is not ours. Amen. The time we have is not ours. The children, the church I have, I hear people say, ah, your church. And I'm praying to God that I never forget that one day I'm going to give an account for every time that I stood on this platform and I was preaching. It is not my church. I have been given as a steward. I have been given as a servant in the same way that your car, your house, your children are not yours. How do I know this? Psalm chapter 24 verse 1. If today if you forget all of the other scriptures that I've been giving you and I pray that you don't but in case maybe you get busy and the week kind of gets ahead of you, don't forget this one. Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth and everything on it including its people belong to the Lord. The world and its people belong to him. See, to be generous with my money, I don't need more of it. I need to remember, I need to realize every single cent that I have belongs to the Lord. To be generous with my words, I need not have eloquent speech. I just need to remember that the vocal cords that I have the lungs that I breathe through, they were given to me as a test, as a trust, and one day I'm going to give an account. This mindset is foundational, church, to everything that has to do with giving. Everything I have belongs to the Lord. When I see and I have that mindset, I have begun to develop an all-weather kind of generosity. The kind of generosity that is not affected by the pandemic. And I'm not saying the pandemic is not there. But the, I, I hope and I believe that we can be the kind of church that is generous with all that we have. This first mindset naturally leads to the second one. I almost think like they are two sides of the same coin. It leads us to the second mindset that we need to develop in order for us to be generous in all occasions. The mindset that says, God has been generous to me. God has been kind. He's been generous to me. Because think about it. If everything on earth belongs to God, but I have a car, I have money. I have children. I have a job. I have a cell phone. What else, Bazalan? I have shoes. What else? Somebody help me out. What else do I have? You have life. You think about it, right? Did anybody buy life? Somebody else. Give me something else that we have. I have the Holy Spirit. Yeah, well, say, it, say it again. Talent. Yeah, what? Talent. Oh, Bazalwan, I have talent. And TJ was invited to a show yesterday, so he definitely was using his talent. 
If everything on earth belongs to God, but I have something I own, something I use, something I drive, something I enjoy, then it means that God has been generous to me. You think about it. If everything belongs to God, but you have something, where did you get it from? Where? Because we didn't steal it, right? So where did we get it from? When you think about it, you realize that sometimes, as I was preparing for this message, I realized that as human beings, we overemphasize our hard work. We do need to work hard. It's important, and I, I, I genuinely encourage us to work hard. But anyone who tries to build, and the Lord is not in it, is working in vain. So even the very fact that our hard work is fruitful is because God has been generous to us. See, to be generous, we need only realize that everything belongs to God. We need to acknowledge that the reason we get to have it is because he has been generous. Listen to what John said, John the Baptist, in John chapter 3, verse 27. No one can receive anything unless God gives it from heaven. There is no one who can receive anything good unless God says they can have it. So God has given us. So today before we think about what we have to give, I'm encouraging us to remember what we have received. God has given us the earth, he has given us families, he has given us all of these things. But there is an even greater gift. The greatest gift that God has given us is his son. By allowing him to die on the cross for our sins. So today, before we think about how much generosity is going to cost us, we must remember how much it cost him. Because for God so loved the world that he gave, God gave first. Before we respond to the calling to give, let's remember how much it cost him. Before we think about how much we will lose, and I don't want to hide the facts, giving is going to cost us something. But before we think about how much we are going to lose, let's think about how much he sacrificed. Now in spite of how generous God has been, many people accuse him of being unkind. Many, not few. Unfortunately, even in the church, many of us accuse God of being unkind. How come? How come God could be generous and he's still accused of being unkind? Kind of like how the, the third servant in the parable of the talents accused him of. If you are in the house today, and you feel like God has been unkind to you. Allow me to help you see things differently. If you want to see that God has been kind to you, here is the secret. Look at what you have, not what others have. If you feel like, ah, no, I know you're saying God is generous, but not to me. The secret to getting things straight, getting things clear, is look at what you have. Don't look at what others have. Hear me out. Comparison blinds. Because in order to compare, you need to look away. Right? So someone could have stuff, but because their eyes are focused on their neighbor, they, they can't see it. They have it, they just can't see it. So the key to seeing the kindness and the generosity of God is to take our eyes away from our neighbor and put them on ourselves. I really, really want to encourage us in that because comparison leads to spiritual blindness. So don't compare yourself with your neighbor. Don't do it. It's a trap. Don't compare yourself with your workmate. Don't even compare yourself with your sister. 
Don't do it. As a pastor, I've learned to not compare because churches are different. If I spend time looking at other churches, eventually, Liberty Church Manzini just looks like it is a little less shine. I begin to feel like, ah, we don't really have a nice church bus. Ah, we don't really have nice church speakers. If I spend time looking at what other churches are doing, it's very difficult to appreciate Liberty Church Manzini. So you know what I have done? I don't even look at what other churches are doing. I learn from my friends. I've got many other pastors who are my friends and I learn from them and we talk about challenges and we, we, we have fun and we have relationship. But on Sunday, I think only about Liberty Church Manzini. I've actually cut down my social media feed because if you realized everything on social media looks nicer than what you have. I don't know about you, but it's like everyone on, on social media is rich. Everyone on social media is always going on dates. It's like the life on social media, is, it's got a certain kind of feeling that if you are not careful, can end up making you feel like you have less. So I, I cut down on social media. And even when I go there, I look at what Liberty Church Manzini is doing. Because comparison blinds me to the people that I have. Comparison blinds me to the fact that we have a community center. It blinds me to the fact that we have been a church for four years and God has been generous to me. So I don't do it. And I encourage you, don't do that to yourself. This leads me to my third and final mindset that helps us build a generous spirit within us. This is the mindset that goes from only saying everything belongs to God and then moving to this place of saying God has been generous to me but takes it a step further and says God wants to be generous through me. God didn't only create the whole world and then bless me. God wants to be generous through me. You see, God has brightened our lives by generously giving to us his son. Now he calls us to brighten other people's lives by being generous to them. God has forgiven us. We agree, right? Anybody here who's thankful <laughs> that your sins are not held against you, I know I am. I am so thankful that they don't put, that the angels don't put my sins on this projector screen because you wouldn't come to church. That is how much God has forgiven me. But now, he calls me to forgive those who have hurt me. God has given us jobs. Now he calls us to pay our tithes. Mm. And he calls us to be generous with our offerings. God has given us businesses. Now he calls us to pay our employees and give them generous bonuses. Can somebody say amen? I'm helping out some employees here. God has given us houses. Now he calls us to take care of the homeless. See, God has been generous to us. The calling now is, would we, like he was to us, be generous to others? Why does God want to be generous through you? That's a question that I, I was processing. I was like, if you think about it, surely the God who rained manna from heaven can just send blessings down. When someone needs a car, it just comes from heaven. Ah, guys, I was praying for a car. It came down last night. God could do that. And there's precedent. He did. Manna did come from heaven. But then eventually, when they got into the promised land, he was like, no. Now it won't happen that way. It's going to come from your fields. And when you plant in your fields, don't harvest at the ends. That's how I'm going to take care of the orphans.
orphans and the widows. Why, why did God decide to limit himself to work through us? Why does he choose to be generous through people that it's not really guaranteed if they will be generous. If you think about it, why does the perfect God limit himself to an imperfect man? I processed that question for a while. And this is the answer that I came with. I do believe there are many other answers, by the way. But this is the one that I came up with. I believe God wants to be generous through us because he desires to be able to trust us. Because if he can trust us and we can trust him, our relationship becomes more intimate. I thought about me and Zinti. That there's, I get so much satisfaction from just knowing that Zinti trusts me. But as we have lived together, I get so much delight from Zinti knowing that I trust her. It's mutual. She can trust me. I can trust her. And when that trust relationship is broken, with, sometimes there's even nothing that has gone wrong. I just feel like our marriage is not okay. If I feel like Zinti feels like she can't trust me, somehow I feel like I've failed. And I think maybe husbands can relate to this, but like, it, it's so devastating to me when I feel like Zinti feels like she can't trust me. Because relationships are built on mutuality. So when we got saved, the question, the challenge was, can we trust God? Can we trust God to forgive our sins? Can we trust God to meet our needs? That was the challenge when we were children in the faith. But as we grow, there is another challenge. There is a new challenge for sons and daughters. When we go from being children in the faith to being sons and daughters and to maturing up until we are fathers in the faith, there is a different challenge. The challenge goes from can we trust God? Two, can God trust us? Can God trust that if there is a needy person in Manzini, Liberty Church Manzini will take care of that need? Can he? Because if he can, the relationship has gone from being a child to being mutual. And you know this. Think about it. The people that you enjoy being around the most, what is common about them and you? You trust them. They trust you. And the moment that trust relationship is broken, the relationship doesn't feel safe. So God is saying, I'm looking for mature sons and daughters. I'm looking for people that when someone gets into a big need, I can prompt them and they'll do what I need them to do on earth. Because I could rain manna from heaven, but I desire relationship. I am the God of relationship. God, he, his highest revelation, he says, Father. And what do fathers want from their sons? relationship. So he says, I want sons. I want daughters. I want friends. Jesus said, no longer do I call you servants. Now I call you friends. I want to hang out. I want to be with you. I want you to be with me. I want you to come into my presence boldly. I want you to come with no fear. The key is to build the relationship from being children to being sons and to being fathers who can be trusted 
to care for new believers. Because in this church, there are going to be people who come who don't really have an idea of who Jesus is. They'll just come maybe because they like the music. They'll come maybe because they're just coming with their friends. And they'll need someone to help them figure Christianity out. Who is going to go? And you know, my hope is we can be the kind of people that go. I remember one time, and I'm going to share this story and then close. Zinti and I were in need. We were desperately in need. We were on our knees. I remember it because it was so desperate. We didn't know how we were going to pay our rent. And we were just praying, Lord, please help us. Lord, please help us. We had been married for about seven or eight months. And we're like, Lord, we need your help. And then these people came. I don't even remember where they came from, but they wanted our help. They asked us, oh, can you take us here? We want to distribute some books for One Hope. We're like, well, we have nothing to do, so let's go. We go, we do it, and then we are done. We have done the trip. As they are preparing to go back, they invite us for dinner. And this one sitting on the dinner table, they bring out an envelope. And they say, we are so thankful that you guys helped us go and do this work. Here is something small for you to do whatever you want with it. He was fun. He was like, Lumile, just make sure there's some money for the boys and some money for the girls, meaning that I should have some for myself and some for Zinti. We went home. We opened the envelope. It wasn't just enough for rent. It was more than enough. It was more than enough. I have never forgotten that story. God could have rained the money from heaven. I know he can. There is precedent. He has done it before. But he chose. There is this man. I trust him. The money is going to go through him. Amen. And everybody that God can trust, God can bless. Amen. So we don't give so that we get a blessing. Can I just say that and emphasize it? We don't give because we're like, it's an ATM that I'm just going to put in 100 rands and then I'll bring out 200 rands. That's, that's not how it is. God doesn't owe us anything. But God is generous. So even when we are serving him, we are blessed in the end. So the principle of generosity is not give so that you can get. Getting is just a natural byproduct. It's not the reason, but it will happen. Give, it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. It will come back to you, but that's not the reason. What is the reason? Number one, everything I have belongs to God. Number two, God has been generous to me. Then number three, God likes me. He wants to hang out with me. He wants to be generous through me. Amen. Let's give God a round of applause. As we conclude this message, I just want to say that we are now going to talk about the areas in our lives where we can be generous. So next week, Baba Chasusa is going to teach us about how to be generous with our time. And then Maggie Chasusa is going to teach us how to be generous with our talents. Zinti is going to teach us about how to be generous with our testimony. And then I'll conclude the series by talking to us about how to be generous with our money. Amen. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. And I want to give to us a generous offer that God
gave to the world. God gave his son so that everyone who believes his son would not die but have eternal life. See, after we die, there is a second death because of sin. But God loved the world so much that he gave the most generous gift the world has ever seen his son so that you would not experience that death and if you are in here and you would like to receive that gift please can you show me by raising your hand and then we will pray for you is there anyone who would like to receive the gift of Jesus Christ Yes, I see one hand. Is there another hand? Someone else who says, I would like to receive the gift of Jesus Christ. Well, let's take some time to pray. And as we pray, for you who raised your hand, I would like you to repeat this prayer as the receiving, as the act of receiving the gift of Jesus Christ. Church, let's help her as she makes this big step, as she receives this generous gift of Jesus Christ. Are we ready? Let us pray. Let us all repeat after me and say, Jesus, I receive you. I believe that you are the gift that God gave to save me and today I put my trust in you help me to live a holy life wash me and make me clean and help me to grow and become someone that you can trust I receive you in Jesus name Amen Amen Praise God Well church there is going to be a generosity challenge that is starting tomorrow and we are going to have those details be given in the various forms that we communicate with us but let's grow and let's be the church that is as good in all weather kind of generosity. Amen. I'm going to invite the one who is coming to share the offering. Nomfundo Lamin. Share um, offering with us today. Um, I would like us to just clap hands one more time for Pastor Lou. I feel like that was a very powerful word. I'll first highlight to our first time guests, we love you so much. We thank you for being with us here. Just know that you are not obliged to give. You can be give as the spirit leads. Um, there are many ways of giving here at Liberty Church. Um, you can drop your tithe and offering on those baskets at the back. You can also give via mobile money. The number is up there. And then we also have got EFT and deposit via the bank. So the details are given there. Um, so I'll just share this short encouragement. Um, throughout this week, I was reading the book of Exodus. And I was reading chapter 16. talks about the children of Israel. And um, in chapter 16, they complained that if only you killed us, um, there at Egypt, we had pots um, filled with meat and bread. And for people who love meat like me, I like, yo, that's soft life. So they complained and said that. And then God spoke to Moses and said, um, he's going to do something. But the provision came with an instruction. And um, the next morning when they woke up, so the dew evaporated. And when it evaporated, the whole area was covered with um, frosty substance, which was kind of like white right and that they asked themselves what is that 
And then um, Moses answered, that's the food you asked for. And then when I stopped here, I realized that sometimes we complain and we want something from God. Expect it from one, expecting it from one direction. Sometimes we feel like maybe you'll sit and then receive an in contact. You'll receive 10,000 from God and then you're like, yo, that's it. Um, but God has got so many ways in which he can provide for us. He can sometimes give you opportunities to make money, not the money literally. And I also stopped and said, wait a minute. Like, they walked for 40 years. It means that if Alice left when she was four years old, she arrived there when she was 45. What happened to the clothes? What happened to the shoes? And I arrived to a conclusion that maybe the shoes grew with them as they were growing. May the clothes grew with them as they were growing. That's another form of provision from the Lord, right? So let us stop limiting God from what he can do. God can provide in ways that we cannot imagine. Then God said, I want you to get a food like two quads. I don't know what the exact measurement is there. And I want you to collect that and you will eat that. What people did was some of them collected a lot, more than what the Lord said. And some of them collected just enough, which means that those who collected enough, we see that the food grew maggot. God told them, don't collect this much. He knew that he will provide for the next day, right? So then the food grew something and then it was spoiled. Now let's bring this to our finances. You have your money, maybe you earn 5,000 and you feel like, no, I need all this 5,000, I have to use it. Guess what? I'm not saying God will take your money, hear me right. But I am saying God is asking you to bring this just 10% to his house and go beyond and give an offering. God will bless the rest. If you give God what is true to him, the rest will be blessed. You will have more than enough left. Those were the words that God spoke to me one time when I was really confused. I was like, God, I don't know what to do, but I trust you. I know that you'll take care of the rest. I found that everything is covered for. So church, let's come to God, not like limiting God. Let's trust him with everything that we have. Like Pastor Lu said, it doesn't come from us. It comes from him. He knows what he's doing. He knows why he requires that 10%. Amen. Shall we close our eyes and pray? Holy Spirit, we thank you today for everything that you have blessed us with, my God. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you are the generous God. And you said your, in, in your word, Lord Jesus Christ, you will provide all our needs according to your glorious riches, Heavenly Father God. We are bringing this offering, God, into your loving hands. And we ask that you may bless us, O oh God, and that, Heavenly Father God, you may help us to understand that our motive for giving is not to receive from you, Lord Jesus Christ, but to give because we understand who you are. We thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like us to turn our attention to the screen for announcements. <music>
next week which is called the world of the generous you know oftentimes when we think about generosity we think about type but generosity is so much more it's being generous with our time it's being generous with our talents it's being generous with our testimony and of course our treasure you know In Proverbs, the Bible tells us that the world of the generous gets larger and larger. Yes, so be ready to open up your heart to receive and to be refreshed. I don't know about you, but Victor, are you ready? Yes. I am ready. And church, I hope you are ready to walk this beautiful journey with us as we generously live as a church together. Amen. Such great things coming up. Amen. And such a great way for us to see all of those things happening. Thank you so much to Victor and his team um, and everybody that was up there just sharing some exciting news. I always love seeing Gogo Hevziba on the screen, right? She's just um, so fun. So let's make sure that we go out and be generous. Have a blessed week, church.